Hi, I'm Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin, and you're watching Pornhub. Christmas isn't the only thing that's coming this year, and once I'm done with the festive raunchy reads in this vlog, it'll be clean up and I'll give us see. Now this vlog is in honour of the December reading vlog I did last year where I actually read Ice Planet Barbarians and The Perfect Poo. And both of them turned out to be really good reads actually. The Perfect Poo is still one of my favourite fecal romances of all time. Granted, it's the only fecal romance I've ever read, but it's up there. It's still up there. So I am on the hunt for another really funny but raunchy read and I decided to theme it around Christmas and the festive season so that it kind of does fit a little bit into my content this month. So let's read some porn. This vlog is rated 18, okay? This vlog is rated 18. I'm sticking to my Kindle for this video as well. I'm getting this bad boy out. I haven't read a book on this in a good few months. I can't remember the last time I read something from it. But anyway, I'm dusting off the cobwebs, just like my good bussy. And I'm gonna read all of the books that I need to read for this vlog on it. So what am I reading for this? I've honestly been waiting to make this vlog since around about June, when I first heard about the very first book that I'm gonna read for this vlog. Like literally, this book is the entire reason why I'm doing this vlog. I borrowed it on the 20th of June, 2022. So that just shows you how long this vlog has been in the works and how long I've been anticipating making it. And it is only a 50 page book, so I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to read other things in it now, aren't I? So the first book that I'm going to read in this vlog is called Regifted, Ganged by the Ghosts of Christmas by JL Logos and Vera Valentine and it's apparently part of the Holiday Hedonism series. I don't actually know what hedonism means. Let's just have a little look. Hedonism is a belief that pleasure or the absence of pain is the most important principle in determining the morality of a potential course of action. Pleasure can be things like sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but it can also include an intrinsically valuable experience, like reading a good book. Oh, wow, okay. So am I a hedonist then? Because I get such pleasure from reading books, honestly. So I don't know how this connects to this regifted Gang Bad Ghost of Christmas. All I know is that it's a very, very dirty retelling of A Christmas Carol, except the role of Ebenezer goes to Ellie, and she's a businesswoman, and four ghostly guests, Jake, Anon, you're in Exo. As she learns how rewarding giving can be, she'll be absolutely filled with dot 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 joy dot 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 by the time they're done helping her embrace the true meaning of Christmas. It sounds very heartwarming. Let's see what it involves. It says it's intended for 18 plus audiences only. Fantastic. So is this vlog. It involves explicit group activity, unprotected interactions with ghosts, and their subsequent glowing ectogism. Ectogism? Bondage, love taps to the face, the old hide the chain trick. What the fuck's the hide the chain trick? And consensual humiliation of the female main character, including some degrading terms that sensitive readers may find offensive. Also, y'all, there's a definitive H-E-A in this one, okay? Don't come for us this time. What does H-E-A mean? Oh, happily ever after, okay. Oh, that's a bit disappointing, isn't it? So it's not just Regifted I'll be reading in this vlog, although it will be the first one I read tonight. I'm also thinking, and I have no idea what these are about just off the top of my head, and I don't really want to, to be honest. Santa Claus is going to town on me. The first book in the Jingle to All the Way series by M.L. Eliza. This one's a bit longer, it's 156 pages, so it might take me a little longer to read. Uh, when Holly wakes up on Christmas Eve to find an intruder in her home, she does what anyone else would, grabs her replica medieval broadsword and sneaks downstairs to deal with them. Yep, exactly what I would do. But he isn't a burglar. He wears a big red coat, big brown boots, and his big round belly shakes like a bowl full of jelly. He's Santa Claus. He's huge and he's hot. Hmm, okay. What begins as a simple misunderstanding develops into a passion Holly never knew she needed, with a man who knows her every want and desire. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Santa does know if you be naughty or nice, so there's a bit of Christmas trivia for you right there. Oh, there's actually like a few content warnings that sound quite deep and dark. I also have some Chuck Tingle books, but I don't think any of them are Christmas related. Let's have a look. Oh, there's a few. I've never read anything by this person before. My bizarre obsession with the fictional narrative of a war on Christmas pounds my butt. Um, I'm sorry, what the fuck are these titles? This bisexual snowman's carrot wiener is in my butthole. Pounded in the butt by the handsome physical manifestation of holiday shopping. Rudolph the Red Nose Butt Raptor. Uh, to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of the title of that one. That one doesn't really make me laugh. Oppressed in the butt by my inclusive holiday coffee cups. And then finally, all I want for Christmas is to eat out my Christmas tree. <laughs> Okay, I think that's all of the Chuck Tingle festive books that are available. So I'm going to do a poll and say what my patrons vote for. <laughs> God. Let me know in the comments which one you would have probably voted for. Because I feel like pretty much all of them have an amazing title. But the Christmas tree one... <sighs> 
that one sounds like it's gonna be a winner. Anyway, let's ho 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 it up and begin our first daily read. It's about three hours later. I still haven't started anything. I wanted something to eat. It took so long for the food to get delivered because I thought this is a special night. You know, I'm reading dirty romances and I cracked open the wine. So I'm like, I'm not cooking. I'm not cooking tonight. It's a Thursday. So I've topped up my wine. I'm about to dive into Regifted. I think we should start reading it together. Like, I feel like I should read it out to you. So we're like, what, 50 pages? We've got this. But if it's absolute shit, then I'll just cut it all out because I tried to do that with Ghost Dick Private Eye or something like that when I was in the castle. And I thought, oh, I'll read it out. I'll read all the funny bits. But not one part of that was bloody funny. So what, fingers crossed, Regifted is... Oh, absolutely amazing, like hilarious. Question, do you keep the case on your Kindle or do you take it off when you read? It's almost a little bit like reading a hardcover and taking the dust jacket off, I guess. But I kind of like the feel of having the actual case on. Okay, so what I'm getting from this is that Ellie isn't exactly like Ebenezer Scrooge. I thought she would be the bar humbug kind of character, but the only reason why she's a little bit sad right now is because her ex cheated on her with Cindy. So she's getting divorced from him. It was a blessing in disguise she'd no longer have to pretend to be interested in that grotesque little nubbin of a dick. Nubbin of a dick. I like that. Ooh, okay, so we have our first ghost encounter and she just fell asleep in this random hotel room. And then Jake, who is dead, her former business partner turned rival, the first thing she's thinking of as she's confronted with this dead person is that they used to flirt and were attracted to one another back in the day. Like, that's the literally the first thing she thinks of. Yet, straight away thinking about his dick. Didn't you die? She grumbled. Didn't you get married? He counted. Ooh. Okay, she thinks she's dreaming. That's why she's quite nonchalant about it. Right, so he's here to make sure that she doesn't make the same mistakes he did. Because he feels like he worked too hard, that he missed out too much on life. And that's apparently what Ellie is. She's a bit of a workaholic. Ellie, let me introduce you to your other ghosty companions for the evening. He just around the room where three other men had seemingly appeared from the ether in the two seconds that she had looked away in search of more alcohol. Your ghost of Christmas past. This is terribly written. She literally sees this ghost and then the next line is, the scene outside the wide window was nothing special. Just a view of the sprawling industrial section of the city. It starts describing the outside. I don't wanna, I don't wanna know about the outside. I wanna know what's inside his pants. Oh, he's got a physique that would make the witcher himself jealous. Sure. Sure, Jan. So your is Christmas past, Anon is the ghost of Christmas present, and Exo is the ghost of Christmas yet to be. As a Christmas carol retelling so far, it's a little bit subpar. Oh, <laughs> okay, so Anon stands up, yet her train of thought completely derailed by the outline of the apparent Yule log hanging between his legs. I've never ever heard a penis be referred to as a Yule log. Tell me more. I guess we really are going to have to show you the error of your ways. I can't claim I wasn't looking forward to this though. At least they're being very clear. They're saying that everything needs to be voluntary and the safe word is merger. This just feels so boring, Ash. Oh, Ash, when did you get there? Has he always been there? She can even think the safe word as well. Remember that because your mouth might not always be unencumbered. Unen unencumbered. Unencumbered. Beats me. Oh yeah, we've got another clenching pussy here. I was sick of clenching pussies in Den of Vipers and now his dark grin made her pussy clench. I just imagine a hand coming out of the pussy and going like this and clenching something. What does it clench? The air. It clenches the air. But that's every time it says it clenches. That's what I think. I think it's grabbing something. She still thinks it's a sex dream and she Thinking it's one of the best sex dreams she's ever had. I wonder what I needed to have a sex dream like this. It was hard to concentrate as Exo added another ghostly phalange. Phalange? I don't know how to say it because I feel like friends ruined that word for me. Is it ghostly phalange? In to join the first inside her. Mmm. Oh, a wickedly curved cock. The tip shining with glowing fluid. Wait, huh? suck. <laughs> That's it. That's all he says. Okay. I mean, the writing isn't terrible here. A deep blush crept into her cheeks as dawning horror and confused arousal wrestled in her body, already aching with need at the absence of Exo's touch. He fanned his spectral fingers over Anon's pr 
profiling, profiling, a faint dome of blue light covering it like a condom. That is an absolutely beautiful simile right there. Covering it like a condom. Oh, look at you laid down like a cheap whore, getting fingered by a whole crowd wet enough to swim in. Ah, uh, there's a lot of ah uh, misogyny coming through on this, not gonna lie. What are you doing to my hat? <laughs> you just see his little paw. You see his little paw going up from the bottom, can't you? Boop. A boop. A <laughs> boop. Boop, 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 boop. You can't have it, Papa. You damage it. Only got it today. Oh, I haven't read for like the past 20 minutes because this little shit decided he wanted all of my attention. Yes. <laughs> So each of the links in the chains that are binding her down are things that she's done in the past. So for instance, that is for when you enforce mandatory overtime over the holidays, preventing your workers from seeing their families. And yeah, so these links keep getting added onto it, which I must admit is quite genius. It's quite genius. If there was ever going to be an XXX rated Christmas Carol retelling, I feel like that is definitely the way to go plot wise. Like I've got to give it to the authors, they've added some great detail to this. What? This one's for not even bothering to learn the janitor's name. Her clit throbbed as her cheeks burned in shame. Why would your clit throb at that? Why? So we've got a clenching pussy, a throbbing clit. What next? A vibrating vulva? Like, what? Oh, good grief, you gave us a fright there, Tobu. Your turn now for snuggles. Oh, you little cutie, I don't know if you saw that, but he went on his back. He's so cute. Once I finish this, I'll do some playtime. Oh yeah, we'll go over the pussy clenching. At the subtle vibration, her pussy clenched around the growing tangle of links stuffed inside it. Yeah, because I've stuffed some of those links up, I've fudged and all. I want to be better, I swear. Show me how to give. Show me how to fix these mistakes. On all fours, Ellie. Put that pretty pussy on display for us properly. Oh my god. Wait, so this is really how you make amends? For being shitty all your life, really? This is making me like feel slightly uncomfortable, but at the same time, I can't look away. She could give, and she'd show them she could. Go on, Ellie. I don't know if you can hear that, but Ash is growling. Is it a ghost? Is he hot? Okay, so as she's saying things like, I'll cancel the holiday overtime, a link slips out of her hoo-ha, and she seems to be getting slightly more forgiving. He pulled the last link out of her, her arousal dripping all over his hand. Would you really call it your arousal? I don't think I've read enough romance. He smeared it back against her slit. Mm. Slit is such a horrible word. Ooh, she's gonna shine like a Christmas tree when I'm done with her. Even Santa doesn't have a sack that big. <laughs> okay, that's like the only funny thing that's happened in this book so far. I'm so disappointed that this isn't funnier. She's being shared like a coveted toy on Christmas morning. Ah, <sighs> why do all the good things happen to bad people? Her pussy clutching now, it's clutching, it's not even clenching, it's clutching and pulsing greedily. Now I just imagine it laughing, like having a really evil cackle. Okay, so the whole sexy stuff has happened. Wasn't as sexy as I was wanting, in all honesty, or funny. Now she's woke up the next morning, she's being cleaned. It's almost like it didn't actually happen. Did she still have ghost jism on her face or something? Ghost jism, what a creative word. Oh, she's a better person now. Who knew getting two ghost sticks shoved in her mouth simultaneously and turned into a spectral sandwich would be the catalyst she needed? Maybe this is the catalyst I need. I mean, feel like shit today. This is what I need. I need to be turned into a spectral sandwich, apparently. What? Oh my god, I'm actually supp What? Splash- Okay, she gets a newspaper. Splashed across the front of the paper, the big bold headline declared, Businessman Jacob Marley, previously presumed dead, reappears. So was that not actually a ghost? In an It was an actual person? What? I'm actually really supp- What? I feel like this is like probably the best plot twist I've read all year in a book. I'm not even joking. He's alive? He died in a plane crash apparently, but he's alive? No. And the other people are part of his team? I'm actually shocked. I'm shook. <laughs> what the fuck? 
Oh my god, the way this book ends. Ellie headed back to the elevator with a holly jolly spring in her step and the memory of spectral semen dripping down her thighs. She rested her head against the mirrored wall in the empty elevator, grinning up at her own reflection as the elevator began to rise back up to her floor. She attempted a terrible Cockney accent. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> Why is this the ending? Why did she attempt a terrible Cockney accent and say, God bless us, everyone, in an elevator? It's so random. So I will say I'm a little bit disappointed it wasn't funnier, but that ending and the plot twist, it got me. Wow. Wow. I'm sh If I do a video of the biggest plot twist I read in 2022, that one, number one. What? Oh, well, it wasn't really that hot of the sex. I don't think that the sex was that hot, to be honest. Even though it, it was just like a lot of, it was just like a lot of slut shaming and misogynistic language. But yeah, it wasn't great. It's just gotten really dark as well. Wow, terrible lighting right now. But you know, it adds to the ambience. It adds to the ambience. I was gonna read more tonight, but after that, I don't think anything can top that twist. So I'm gonna leave it. I'll leave it for the night. I'm gonna continue reading stuff tomorrow. Ooh, I'm gonna see what my patrons voted for. Okay, let me do like a little countdown thing. In last place is my bizarre obsession with the fictional narrative of a war on Christmas pounds my butt with only 2%. In fifth place is a press in the butt by my inclusive holiday coffee cups. In fourth, it's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Butt Raptor. I'm really glad about that actually. That one just does not sound funny. In third place, Pounded in the butt by the handsome physical manifestation of holiday shopping. In second place, I'm a little bit sad about this. All I want for Christmas is to eat out my Christmas tray. So that means the winner is this bisexual snowman's carrot wiener is in my butthole with 37%, which honestly, that does sound amazing and a really funny title. So I'm glad I'm gonna read that. So I think I wanna read both. <laughs> I'm gonna read the one that I wanna read, which is all I want for Christmas is to eat out my Christmas tray. And then I will also read this bisexual snowman's carrot wiener is in my butthole. And I think I'm gonna read them tomorrow. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's see how we get on. <laughs> We're going for a bit of a different vibe this morning. I have coffee instead of wine, and I have a Chuck Tingle book ready to go. And the first one is one that I picked myself. My patrons didn't vote it to win, but I'm gonna read this one as my choice, and then I'm gonna read my patrons choice. So I'm reading, all I want for Christmas is to eat out my Christmas tree first, and then I will read the one that the patrons voted for after. So this one is about Amy, and she's on the hunt for the perfect Christmas tree. In a moment of inspiration, Amy attempts to get to the heart of the season by traipsing into the snow-covered hillside and finding the perfect tree for herself. But what she discovers is so much more. Now, Amy and her sentient lesbian Christmas tree, Nuna, apparently, she has a Christmas tree called Nuna, that's a sentient lesbian Christmas tree, are cultivating a little Christmas spirit with a hardcore lesson in holiday lovemaking that is shout to jingle your bell. I've decided to step this one up a little bit because I was a little bit disappointed about last night's regifted book and it not being funnier. This is a water flosser and it's like a water gun. Essentially, it's like a water gun. I got this in the Black Friday sale and I do use it for my teeth. But have you seen the power of it? I don't know if you'll be able to see very well on this, right? But this is low power and it scares the cats as well. Poor Tobu's eating right now. This is it on just low power. Like, whoa, oh shit. I was accidentally aiming for the light bulb. So hopefully that's all right. Uh, but right, but that's just on low power and it literally goes all the way to the ceiling, right? Watch it on high power, right? This is, this is it on high power. Right, I'll try not to aim for the light bulb, just like uh, in the random direction over here, just so we can see the water spurt. <laughs> it's literally a water gun, it's so powerful. So I'm gonna put that on low, and I'm gonna do a little try not to laugh challenge. So I'm gonna read this, all I want for Christmas is to eat out my Christmas tree book by Chuck Tingle, and do a try not laugh challenge. If I laugh, I have to squirt myself with this. This is like such a stupid idea, honestly. We're gonna start this book. 
And then we will read the patrons one after, which I might also do the Try Not Laugh Challenge. It depends on how well this one goes because it is my first Chuck Tingle. It might not actually be funny. Okay, here we go. To be fair, I'm loving her determination because she just cannot find the perfect Christmas tree. There's always something wrong with it and she's determined to make this Christmas the best Christmas ever. So I totally get her hesitation of just buying any Christmas tree willy-nilly. She has to get the perfect one. And apparently a sentient lesbian Christmas tree is the one. I'm really enjoying the setup of this story though. I'm feeling very attached to this hunt for the perfect Christmas tree. Okay, we've met the tree. I can't laugh. Suddenly I gasp, my eyes fixing upon the most beautiful Christmas tree I've ever seen. Oh hey, the tree blurts, turning around and smiling wide. I didn't see you there. I mean, arming character Amy says... You're just absolutely gorgeous. I feel the the sexual tension instantly, I really do, between Amy and this tree. Oh, the tree is also saying that there's no perfect anything. Maybe Amy's about to get a wake up call. Is this gonna be character growth? Am I gonna get attached? Okay, Amy's asked her right up, do you wanna come home with me? Fortunately, Nuna's playing a little hard to get right now, which I never thought I would ever say. A tree playing hard to get. Hmm. Okay, the tree is swaying her hips. I didn't realize trees had hips. With seductive grace, exuding a breathtaking confidence that makes me tremble with anticipation. Imagine a tree walking up to you, swaying its hips. It, trees don't have hips. Crap, I laughed. Oh, damn it, okay, we go. Oh, it's going right on the wall, it's not even hitting me. How am I supposed to do this? Hang on, I have to do, I think I have to do it like this. That was one squirt. I feel like it won't be the only squirt that's happening today. And I mean my story, of course. Oh, damn it. I'm gonna change it to something a little more comfortable. The sentient plant coos. I'm gonna get this dressing gown so wet as well. I should probably take it off. You know what, I will. Oh, just straight with a kissing, okay. Wait, has she also got hands? Their hands exploring one another's bodies in the heat of passion? I just feel like this is just someone in a Christmas tree costume or something. She's also got breasts! <laughs> Tobo, don't look. Don't look. Please, the Christmas tree groans. I need you. What? <laughs> Damn it. I finally have mercy and slip my hand down farther, lightly grazing her pussy as the softest moan escapes Nuna's lips. What? How is the, oh, I can't picture this in my mind. Uh, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> Be careful. I'm not even gonna read that out loud. How does a plant have an ache and clit? Like, just a what? <laughs> Soon enough, she's screaming out the top of her lungs. Oh fuck, Merry fucking Christmas. Can you imagine a sentient lesbian tree saying that? They're doing this, by the way, in very snowy, freezing conditions, but the erotic heat between Nuna and I has warmed me to the core, overwhelming my body with an unshakable sense of comfort. I feel cozy and taken care of, swimming in a gentle haze of Christmas spirit. I mean, I'm not judging, I'm not judging. It's the tree's turn to go down there, and she's working just a little bit too fast. I feel like we're going to have some kind of teachable moment here between Amy and Nuna. So that's pretty good. It's nice to know that Nuna can take constructive criticism. Uh, but Amy wanting the perfect Christmas tree is like, because I had to instruct Nuna to go slower, does that mean she's not the perfect Christmas tree? Most potent climax of her life was given to her by a Christmas tree. Oh. Amy's invited Nuna to spend the holidays with her. That's so nice. Okay, so Christmas trees have their own traditions. They get humans and they decorate them with ornaments and lights and have them there as well and put Christmas gifts at their feet. Oh, oh so there's some kind of agreement between them. Amy is going to be her Christmas human and Nuna is going to be her Christmas tree. Okay. I kind of like this world building. This is actually like pretty decent world building. I never would have thought of that. Oh, wow. Okay, so there are other Christmas trees. This is moving very fast. There are other trees in the area that are sentient and Nuna introduces me as her new girlfriend. That is very, very fast. Slow down. Ah, she's in love. She is in love. 
Some say that love is the soul of books, and what better way to show a little love than with a free gift? Oh, okay. Wow, okay, so the story's already over. And it said 22%. It still says like 55 minutes, but that's the entire book done. That was way shorter than I thought. But there is a bonus story called My Lesbian Twice Baked Potato Ski Instructor Eats My Ass. That name, amazing. Uh, but that's not what I signed up for in this video. Okay, I'm gonna give that book like two out of five. Like that was way too short for my liking. Like shorter than I thought it was gonna be. And I didn't even get that wet, which is the biggest indication. So now it's time for this bisexual snowman's carrot wiener is in my butthole. And this one is Jack is a workaholic who suddenly finds himself snowed in and fresh out of productive things to do. His wife Amanda eventually suggests using this time to relax and focus on the present. Jack manages to build a snowman in the yard. When the snowman asks to come inside, however, Jack and his wife find themselves crossing paths with a meta-reality of the Tingleverse, forced to confront their own temporary nature as characters in an erotic short. Soon enough, they decide the best use of their limited time is a hardcore bisexual threesome with their snowy creation. That's exactly what I would do too. But the Tingleverse? Is this some kind of like MCU? Oh, we're going very meta. There is a book that Amanda finds called Helicopter Man Pounds Dinosaur Billionaire Ass by Chuck Tingle. So yep, Tingleverse confirmed. Without wasting any time, I pop up from my seat on the couch and rush over to the bookshelf, selecting another Chuck Tingle paperback from the collection and then return to my seat. Uh, it's... Uh, crap! That wasn't a real laugh. That wasn't a real laugh. That was just me... Uh, yeah, I guess laughing. Laughing at the fact that Chuck Tingle is literally blowing smoke up his own ass. Torbo's right there as well. Oh, okay, I'm gonna record Torbo on my phone. Let's get his reaction to me squirting myself in the face. Watch this, Torbo. Oh, how am I supposed to do this with one hand? This is really hard. Watch, watch this doorbell. Look, watch. <laughs> I don't know if it reacted because I had my eyes closed. Isn't that so silly? Now the... Oh, God damn it! I'm making myself laugh. The wife is asking about these books and like, they're just like talking about these truck tingle books. Oh. I put it up to the second lowest setting instead of just the lowest. So let's see if this makes any difference to, to me getting wet. Don't worry, Torbo. Daddy's just being silly. Okay. Right, they're talking about these books and he's read a lot of them. And his wife is like, what's this one about? And he's like, that's the one where he gets pounded by his own butt. My wife narrows her eyes. This is about a lesbian jet ski. Oh, I guess I wasn't really paying attention. Amanda says, you may have scanned these, but you certainly didn't read them. She's criticised in the fact that he's read all these Chuck Tingle books and didn't take any of it in. I have a habit of focusing on the destination more than in a journey. Damn, why is that quite deep? That feels like me with reading. Sometimes I feel like I just have to get to the end of the book rather than just enjoying the experience of reading and the journey. Oh, damn. That's actually quite hit me hard. This is what I've been struggling with for the past couple of months. I didn't think I would get this philosophy from a Chuck Tingle book. And now he wants to build a snowman to enjoy the present because the snowman won't last. Oh, he put the carrot on the face, right? He's gone in for food and he's come back. And now the carrot is protruding from his larger snowy bowl, the vegetable creating an enormous orange cock. Hey there, the sentient creation offers. Mind if I come in? Oh, sure. Oh sure, oh, oh sure, oh sure. Oh my God, why can't I say sure? Sure, oh sure. I couldn't say that for a second, I don't know why. I didn't realize you were alive. I would have invited you in sooner. What is it with the characters in Chuck Tingle or the Tingleverse just being so nonchalant about these sentient beings? I wasn't sentient then. I didn't become a living object until those pranksters came by and gave me a carrot for a cock. Bless you, you're just trying to sleep, aren't you? Well, I'm just trying to read. What? My wife and I can't help but glance down at the snowman's impressive rod, the vegetables still jutting out of his rounded lower third. When the snow that makes up my physical form was eroticized, I became self-aware. We're characters in a Chuck Tingle book, and because Chuck Tingle writes erotica about living objects, that was the turning point. I'm just gonna square myself or put myself in this position, in all honesty. And I'm going to put on the highest setting because 
how far I have fallen. How how far I, I deserve this. Oh, this is the highest set and hopefully it doesn't like hurt me. Ah! <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh my God. That went right in my ear. It's only now that I know it's just how breathtakingly handsome this icy figure really is. I'm not trying to compliment my own handwork either. Just appreciating the beautiful frozen body that sits before me. Hmm. From the corner of my eye, I notice my wife doing the same. I'm just here to talk about some themes, the snowman explains. It's easy to write an erotic short story, but the craft comes from adding layers of subtext, or at least providing a real message. This story is about appreciating the present and finding joy in doing something just to do it. I mean, I really do appreciate that theme and that sentiment. I really do. Just like, we're the sentient snowman. Okay, they're literally, they're literally saying out loud their character development. I've never read a book so aware before. It's not just snowmen who have a limited amount of time, it's also the two of you. I'm in very good health, I counter. I've still got plenty of life to live. Sure, Fondo agrees, but this book is going to end in 2,000 words. I, I don't know if this is genius. A lot of what he's saying doesn't make a lick of sense to me, but the overall message is crystal clear. I've been reading these books way too fast to get much out of them, and I don't want the same thing to happen to my life. This is deep. This is far too deep for this early in the morning. Make moments. Do something unexpected. Say yes to adventure. Oh, this is actually revolutionary. This might be a five star. Okay, the wife just goes over and starts kissing the snowman. Oh, and he's being pulled in too with Roman hands and kissing lips. The handsome snowman begins to work me with his muscular stick arms. Why does he keep calling his penis a rod? I don't like that word. Stop calling it a rod. Okay, the husband has just dropped to his knees, turned around and stuck his ass in the air. Get over here and fuck me, I demand. His enormous carrot rod. Stop calling it a rod. Tightly puckered back door. Filling me up with his member. You don't need to use all of these synonyms. His vegetable member. Why aren't you just saying cock or dick or penis? Ooh, uh... Now the husband is hungrily lapping away at her waiting pussy. Lapping away? That is not a nice visual. It really isn't. Carrot rod. Carrot rod. Carrot rod. Shh. I'm literally going to squirt this goddamn Kindle. I slam back down into myself just in time to receive Fondle the snowman's milky payload. Milky payload? Oh, the snowman's melting away. Oh my gosh. Oh. This has hit me harder than Frozen 2. This encounter was about the present, not the future. It doesn't matter, this story is coming to an end. If you look down, you can see the vast blank whiteness below. Ha, no I can't, because I have to turn the page. At the end of the day, this isn't really about me, but it also isn't about you or Amanda. It's about the reader. Oh, that hits. Just a little reminder to appreciate every moment as it comes, to seize the day when you get the chance, to use the time you've got for a little loving, whatever that may be. To have fun because every book has a beginning, and every book has an end. We always leave our mark on the timelines we move through, like echoes on a quiet, snowy night. Oh, I'll be back again, someday. And so will you. We might just be echoes, but even the faintest echo can cause an avalanche. Stop. Again, the book's completed, and now there is another story included called Bisexual Polyhedral, Roleplay and Dice Orgy. Don't know what the hell that means, but yeah. Okay, I probably like that one a little bit more than all I want for Christmas is to eat out my Christmas tree. My patrons voted for the right one at the end of the day, but I'm glad I read both. I didn't get as wet as I was expecting. So I think the next book that I read, Santa Claus is going to town on me, which is like 155 pages. I will most likely read on my own accord. I might still squirt myself whenever I laugh. But honestly, ever since reading The Perfect Poo, not a single book has made me laugh as much. I'm still looking for that perfect book. I feel like the main character in All I Want For Christmas Is To Eat Out My Christmas Tree. I'm still looking for that perfect book. But maybe, just maybe, we can't find... Why has these Chuck Tingle books gotten into my head? There was so much philosophy and so much to take from it that I'm just surprised, so surprised at how much 
they have left an impression on me. I probably have given the snowman one like three out of five. It was definitely better than the Christmas tree one. Anyway, let's read Santa Claus is going to town on me and hope that it provides some laughs. Okay, so I was going to do a B-roll of me reading Santa Claus is going to town on me, but um, my battery died. <laughs> And I still wanted to read it, so I just went ahead and did that. I feel drenched. I also had a coffee and slopped by accident. So I have like a coffee stain on there somewhere. Uh, fortunately, I just wanted to wear this for this vlog. Anyway, Santa Claus is going to tell me, I feel like I'm catching a cold <laughs> because I've just squirted myself so much with water today. Oh, I'm actually shivering. <laughs> Where's my dressing gown? I DNF'd it at 27% because, like, not because it was bad, but because it was getting into a territory where they were, like, falling in love and they were, like, getting to know one another, which is honestly fine, but that's not the vibe I'm going for in this vlog. So it was good so far, like, what I've read, and I probably will continue it some other time, but love and romance, really, like, falling in love and that whole, like, dating experience thing is not what I'm into right now. I got the sexy part, at least the first sexy part, done. So I did laugh a couple of times actually. Well firstly, Santa has accidentally come to Holly's house. Holly is the main character and she hates Christmas. She really hates Christmas. And Santa accidentally got the wrong house. He was forced to go to like this five-year-old girl's house called Holly as well. And Santa can not exactly read Holly's mind, but he knows what people want. He can feel people's desires. And obviously Holly really wants to fuck Santa Claus. <laughs> She calls him a stern Christmas daddy. And honestly, it does kind of sound like that. She says, I want him, I need him, my pussy tingles and tightens, and I know I'm getting wet. Kneeling before Santa Claus in front of my Christmas tree. So this first encounter happens, but like they don't do anything. Santa just knows what she wants, but he has a job to do, you know? What I really respect about this portrayal of Santa is that he still wants to do a good job. He still wants to get the presents to all the children of the world. Have I fallen for daddy Santa Claus? Maybe I have. And he goes, off to do it. She says, I'm gonna, you know, be done with family stuff by 6 p.m. tomorrow, which is Christmas Day, and that's when they should do it. I feel really bad for Mrs. Claus. Like, I didn't get far enough to find out if he does have a Mrs. Claus, but I assume that he would. So, unless he ends up making Holly his Mrs. Claus, I don't know. Santa Claus is absolutely going to town on me, and I can't get enough of it. He releases my legs and lets me rest my thighs on his sturdy shoulders, lets me tangle my fingers in his soft white hair. Ho, ho, holy fuck, I gasp. <laughs> Right, that one totally went over my head there, but I'm not doing it again. This is it. I'm going to say his Santa cock. And what a cock he has. His shimmering silver bush gleams at me as his dick bobs free of its confines, hard and curved upward. It's thick, almost intimidatingly so, but my pussy tightens as though I can pull him inside me just by sheer force of will. So we, again, we have more like pulsating vagina action. Senna has a curved penis. Uh, if you ever wanted to know what Senna's dick looked like, there you go. I lie completely still as he tinkers with the device covering my clit. Oh yeah, actually one thing as well. Santa gives her a present and it's this device that he made himself that can do some sucking action for him so that he can watch her and stuff. So yeah, that was kind of like my first kind of thing with that. And it was a fine encounter. I'm sure the encounters get more steamy as the book goes on, but it's longer than the words I've read in this vlog. And I ended up watching Madison Mary's 24 hours reading spicy holiday romances vlog and Madison Mary from Princess Paperback of course. I will link her vlog down below. I just watched it and it was so funny and she mentioned a book that I just had to get called Groped by the Grinch and I just knew I had to read it. Can Holly Jolly's Christmas spirit handle the Grinch? I mean considering the Grinch is <laughs> quite a catch. So what I think I should do is I should read Groped by the Grinch dressed as the Grinch. Not that I can see anything out of this, to be honest. I've never tried to read with this on. And I don't know if I'll actually be able to, you know, do this with a Kindle. So let's give it a try. Okay, <laughs> I literally can't read in here. That's also a little hard to breathe, not gonna lie. Oh, it does work. It does work. Perfect. Okay, let's get to the Grinch action. Okay, we have another Holly who doesn't like Christmas. Okay, I think Holly's a salesperson. Ooh, she's seen someone in what she thinks is a green jacket, but he says nobody else can see me and they can only hear me when I want them to. There was something in that tone, something that promised I don't know what, but that tone made my pussy throb and my skin tingle. Oh, good grief. It literally went from zero to 100. Yeah, she can't see him. She can just hear a voice. I'd like to see you ignore me while I tell you how much I'd like to take your nice big tits into my hand and pinch your nipples, massaging them until you give in to the itch to push back and grind against my nice hard cup. I need to... 
Oh, it's not so bad when I've got the mask on. Oh, she's massaging her own breast now. Literally, the, it's just a voice. Literally just a voice. The people in these books are so horny. <laughs> you were surprised I can see you, but I can't actually see you, except for flashes here and there. Why is that? Oh, baby, I'd love to flash you here and there and everywhere. Not sure. You can handle what I've got, though. <laughs> the Grinch! The Grinch! I actually need to take a breath. <laughs> it's going in my mouth. This is not a great mask. <laughs> okay, Madison Berry mentioned this in her video as well, but when she finally sees him, she's like, yo, yo. You know, like in the actual movie with Jim Carrey, it's like, the, 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 the Grinch. <laughs> Instead of saying the Grinch, yo, yo, he says, hum. <laughs> you know what? The squirting, it doesn't work with a mask on. Let's, let's stop squirting and just get to reading. Why, yes, I am. My heart may be two sizes too small, but that has no problem in the size department. Apparently his penis is bobbing up and down like it was nodding at me. And I had to blink a couple of times to make sure I wasn't saying things because it was flashing. Well, actually twinkling like a row of green and white Christmas tree lights were wrapped around the shaft. I, the Grinch? My Grinch? Like what you see, sweetie? <laughs> You're the Grinch. I said, he bowed in the flesh. Oh my. What? Although I did sneak a peek, I couldn't help it. It was the biggest cock I've ever seen, and it lit up, and the Grinch was completely naked, so it was just there, sort of waving at me. Oh, ah, we've got a sentient penis over here as well. God, I've got 11 minutes left of this. I can do it. Okay, apparently being around the Grinch pulls people out of their true desires. So she's currently touching herself in the middle of a stool. Good to know. Fuck me, I said then gasped. I meant to say fuck you. <laughs> Green furry buns of steel. Stop it. Uh, I don't want to ruin actually watching The Grinch now. <laughs> okay, he's going to seduce her. That's quite nice. I can only say out of one eye hole, by the way. Let's see what you got, Grinchy boy. <laughs> I pressed up against my thumb and I felt myself grow wet at the realisation that only a tiny piece of silk kept that thick shaft from sliding between my pussy lips. <laughs> Do I have to use the word lips? <laughs> oh, again, pussy lips. <laughs> oh... I looked down between us, resting my head on his muscular chest, my breathing becoming heavier as I watched his thick shaft become slick and shiny as he coated himself with my juices. The sparkling green lights that encircled his shaft continued to blink. Ay ay ay! Oh, squirted my essence on the Grinch's cock. A line I never thought I'd read. Oh, what? He ran his tongue along his shaft, licking his own cock. What? Oh, he's licking the juices off it. Okay, okay. Ooh. Hate, hate, hate. Loathe entirely. Oh, okay. She ran her tongue down his shaft, mourning as a hint of peppermint flavour exploded on her tongue. It was a Grinch's prefilm. Okay, hang on. I actually have some peppermint syrup. I want to give it a try. Yep, got my syrup here. Let's just give it a little try. Let's give it a little try. Ooh. Just take a little bit, just a little bit. So that's what it's like. <laughs> More peppermint flavoured pre -cum leaked from his slit. Ugh, I hear that word! And I greedily lapped it up. Why is there a lot of lapping? Lapping of things in these stories. Ooh, the lights on his penis are starting to flash faster, I think, the closer he's getting to orgasm. Oh, he's, oh wait, oh shit. Removed his tongue from her vajiji and slid it into her ass. Oh, the pills on his Thing in my bobby are spinning as well now, oh my lord. I pulled my thong off and dropped it on the floor. It was soaked with a combination of my juices and Grinch cum. Lucky bitch. Okay, so now she's gonna keep him happy so that people can feel Christmas joy because her place of work has just been void of Christmas joy. Oh, oh my god, that was an experience. Oh, could barely breathe in that. I'm gonna have to go in the shower again. Well, 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 I'm glad I read that. That was probably like my favorite one of the vlog to be honest i've got grinch hair everywhere and not the kind of grinch hair i like i ended up reading oh my god i've already forgotten well i read five i did dnf one but i'm just gonna call it a read and yeah i definitely read more than i was anticipating as well because i was only gonna read a few in call and i was just gonna do it in one day as well but no alas we were on the second day I need to move on to something else quite honestly I feel like I need to scrub my eyes with bleach yeah I had a fun time though 
I had a really fun time reading those stories. I've already forgot the names of some of them. I've had to return some of them to Kindle Unlimited. Get them off my Kindle. Get them off my... If the FBI ever checks my Kindle. <sighs> but this was my Christmas gift to myself. To spend a couple of days reading random stuff. Random romance. Random filthy romance. I lived to the fullest. I did. Great material I worked with in this vlog, I think. Whether or not I have some new favourites is debatable. But... I feel like this experiment was still quite worthwhile. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you have other filthy Christmas romance books that you would recommend to me, maybe to read next Christmas. Or I might just read them in my own leisure. Who knows? I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel. If you'd like to join my Patreon or follow me on any social media, then all the links are down in the description. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.